vigilante parents who took justice into their own hands. Many parents would go to the ends of the earth for their children. For some parents, that testament gets pushed farther than anyone would have ever imagined. When tragedy strikes, many parents are satisfied by the response from the legal system and are content knowing justice was served. But that's not enough for some parents. There are many instances where the legal system has failed their children and family. Some parents take the law into their own hands in the pursuit of justice. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Here are five intriguing cases of parents turned vigilantes. Before we begin, take a second to subscribe to The List Planet and help support us in our endeavor to bring you more fascinating content in the future. Number 5. Eduardo Gallo Eduardo Gallo turned himself into a full-time private detective following the kidnapping of his 25-year-old daughter, Paola. The abduction took place in the year 2000. Paola was in her family's weekend home with friends in Tepozlan, Mexico. Several armed men broke into the house and stole cars, jewelry, and clothing. They terrorized Paola's friends before kidnapping Paola and demanding a ransom for her safe return. Eduardo gathered $18,000 in cash and a few other precious items and attempted an exchange with the kidnappers. Unexpectedly, when Eduardo went to make the exchange, another group of men opened fire on the kidnappers thinking it was an ambush. The kidnappers killed Pala. Eduardo had seen enough when law enforcement failed to investigate his daughter's death properly. Taking matters into his own hands, Gallo realized that law enforcement would not solve his daughter's murder. He then closed his consulting firm and became his own private investigator. He posed as a salesman and visited villages where he believed the kidnappers had connections. He used payphones to keep in touch with gang members who knew the gunman that murdered Pala. When Eduardo had gathered enough information, he told police, who set up a trap and were able to arrest his daughter's killer. The gunman admitted to the murder and was sentenced to 40 years in prison. Number 4. Dracius Keddies Dracius Keddies had separated from his girlfriend and received full custody of his daughter. Dracius had learned from his daughter that she was frequently left with her so-called uncles while she was supposed to be in the care of her mother. The child described horrific sexual abuse from the uncles. Keddies brought the case to law enforcement, believing his ex had allowed men to violate their daughter in exchange for money. His former girlfriend, Lymute, denied all allegations. Law enforcement did investigate the case. However, Dracius did not believe enough was being done. Keddie's allegations were completely dismissed by the courts, and in 2009, Dracius shot Lymute and her sister Violetta, who he believed to be involved in the abuse his daughter received. Dracius disappeared after the shootings. However, Dracius' body was later found in a lake in 2010. While officially rolled an accident, an independent investigation found that Dracius was intentionally drowned. Andreas Usas, who was suspected of the molestation of the child, was tried. However, he was found dead, apparently by accidental drowning, before the case went to trial. The case was heard in his absence, where he was found not guilty. Number 3. Gary Plosh Gary Plosh's three sons attended a karate school in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Jeffrey Dossett, the school owner, took a particular interest in Jody, Plosh's 11-year-old son. On February 19, 1984, Dossett picked up Gary's son Jody and promised to have him back in 15 minutes. June, Jody's mom, let them go. She had no reason to doubt Jeffrey. A year earlier, her son told the school newspaper that he's all our best friend, and Jody quit other sports to dedicate as much time as possible to karate with Jeffrey. No one foresaw what would happen next. Dossett, in fact, had Jody board a bus to the West Coast with him. Dossett shaved his beard and dyed Jody's hair so as not to be recognized. Dossett checked himself and Jody into a cheap motel in California and proceeded to sexually assault him. Police were able to trace Jody's call, found his location, and put him on a plane back home. Upon learning what had happened to his son, Gary Plosh was horrified and enraged. 
He was spotted around town frequently asking others when they thought that Jeffrey would be brought back to Louisiana for trial. A friend of Gary's, with connections to a local news channel, told Gary what date Jeffrey would be brought back to Louisiana. Plouch drove to the Baton Rouge airport wearing a baseball cap and a pair of sunglasses. He made a call to the news crew on a payphone and told them to be ready to film as Dossett got off the plane. When Dossett was escorted off the plane, Gary Plosh shot him in the head, fatally injuring him. Community support for Gary was overwhelming. While he stood trial for the murder of Jeffrey Dossett, he walked away with five years probation and 300 hours of community service. Number 2. Sergei Chabin and Valeria Dunaeva This case is quite different from the others on this list and is, sadly, very unfortunate. The victim in this case, Dmitry Chikvarkin, had given a lift to Sergei's and Valeria's daughter and her friend. After dropping the girls off, their daughter made a false sexual assault accusation stating that Dmitry had inappropriately touched the girls. Not knowing the validity of their daughter's accusation, Sergei and Valeria decided to seek some private justice. The enraged couple were hell-bent on getting revenge on Dmitry so they had three male acquaintances ambush him very unexpectedly. Dimitri was struck over the head with a metal pipe and then raped with the same pipe. He died shortly after as a result of head trauma. The parents and attackers were charged with murder with special cruelty by a group of persons by prior conspiracy, and the attackers face life sentences. Number 1. Miriam Rodriguez Maryam's 20-year-old daughter mysteriously disappeared in 2012. Her daughter had been kidnapped and subsequently murdered, and several men were perpetrators in the crime. Dissatisfied with the Mexican justice system, Maryam decided to take matters into her own hands. To fool authorities and her daughter's kidnappers, Maryam changed her appearance as best as she could and used fake identification to make it more difficult to trace her. One of Miriam's first victims was a member of a Mexican cartel who was implicit in the kidnapping and murder of her daughter. She cornered him, held him at gunpoint, and told him, if you move, I'll shoot you. But she was just getting started. She eventually tracked down her daughter's killers one by one all across the country. Unfortunately, her vigilantism led to her ultimate downfall when multiple gunmen managed to kill her outside her home. Becoming a vigilante against organized criminals is a huge risk to take, but it was one that Miriam was willing to take so she could seek justice for her daughter. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we release new videos.